Germans have a love of beer and sausages, but they also have a love of wine. From sparkling wine to rosé to red, there's a variety of delicious German wines for any occasion. On this episode of Crush on This, we will journey to three wine regions in Germany, the Mosel, Rheingau, and Pfalz, to explore the diversity of German wines and the German wines to drink now. We hope you enjoy this video, give it a like, and subscribe to our channel for more. Germany might be known for its beer and sausage consumption, but they are also known for their wines. Germany produces a wide range of grapes, from white wines like Riesling to red wines like Pinot Noir, known as Spatburgunder, and diverse styles from dry to sweet and still to sparkling. With 13 distinct wine regions, Germany is one of the most northerly winemaking areas in the world, and each region offers something unique. Let's journey to the three of the most famous regions, the Moselle, the Rheingau, and Pfalz. The Moselle is the region of Riesling. Germany is known for its Riesling wines, and after all, they produce more than 50% of the world's Riesling supply. And the Mosel is the world's most celebrated Riesling producing region in the world. Located in the southwest part of Germany, the Mosel has a northerly climate, steep slopes, and famous slate soil, which are perfect for this noble grape variety. And over half of the wine production in the region is Riesling. A versatile grape reason can express a range of styles from dry to off dry to sweet. It can be light to medium bodied with pronounced acidity and aromas reminiscent of apple, peach, and apricot. Let's start with the Selbach Oster 2019 Schmidt, a Riesling from the Moselle for only $24. The Selbach family has owned vineyards in the Moselle region since 1661. They have a hands-on philosophy of winemaking in the vineyards but a hands-off philosophy in the cellar. Most of the wines from the family are fermented and matured in traditional oak fluter barrels, supplemented by a small number of stainless steel vats. No new oak is used on this Riesling. Allison, what's in your glass? So what I'm getting are these gorgeous aromas of ripe apple. I'm getting peaches, a little apricot. It says it's a trocken, which is dry, but there's this lovely honeyed finish on the, on the palate that is just, you know, it's making me just go back for more and more. It's delicious. Wow. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> keep, keep drinking that. So due to a cool climate, Germany's wine regions are especially suited for the production of fresh, fruity, sparkling wine. And I know you have a sparkling Riesling from the Moselle. I do. It's the Marcus Molitor Brut Set. It's a $20 sparkling wine. Um, also uh, Riesling, but I'll get into that. Marcus Molitor has been producing sparkling wine since 1982 and is actually one of the pioneers in the tradition of sparkling wines in this region. They are the largest privately owned winery, family run vineyard in the Mosul with 94 acres of vineyard land, which are all sustainably and organically farmed. And their production is 95% Riesling and then a little bit of Pinot Noir and Pinot Blanc. So for this wine, which is 100% Riesling, uh, the grapes are crushed and fermented in large wooden barrels. And then the secondary fermentation follows in the tank. So with that, you get slightly larger bubbles in general. Mm -hmm. I get red apple and grapefruit, some stone fruit, some a lot of white peach is coming off of it and just a little touch of brioche coming in there. Mm. Very delicate and light. It's very, there's almost a um, austere dryness in the center of the palate. It's very clear and lively. The bubbles are very fine, almost, you know, they're very faint. The, the, the carbonation of this wine is not very present but I get a lot of almost wet stone uh, minerality. And I just, it's a really crisp, refreshing wine. I think I would love to have this with some oysters or sushi right now. Oh, you're making <laughs> me hungry. You're making me hungry. But right now I'm ready to go to Rheingau, a place that's fit for royalty. The Rheingau was first planted with vines by Emperor Charlemagne of the Holy Roman Empire, who recognized this area, the Rheingau's potential. Um, when in the 810s, it's, it's hard not to say 1810s, with the 810s, he noticed that the snow on the south-facing slopes 
melted earlier than elsewhere. And then a century later, Queen Victoria of Great Britain became enthralled with this, the wines of the Rheingau and made it famous. So it's definitely fit for the royals. The region fell to mediocrity apparently in the years following the Second World War, but producers today are showing this region's true potential. Quite nice. The Rheingau produces Riesling, Muller Thurgau, and Spatburgunder, Pinot Noir. And with the Pinot Noir, they also make delicious dry rosé wines. So good that Germany's production of rosé has nearly doubled over the past decade. So this is the Weingut Lights 2019 Pinot Noir Rosé from the Rheingau. Weingut uh, Joseph Lights is one of Rheingau's top growers and under the direction of Josie Lights, who took over his family estate in 1985, he's grown the holdings from 2.6 hectares to over 40. So a grand grow, uh, growth. And most of these are Grand Cru sites on the slopes of the Rudenheismer Berg. Uh, this is a direct to press rosé made from 100% destemmed Pinot Noir. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful the color. Oh, gorgeous. The grapes macerate for three hours before they're pressed. So that's why you get this really delicate pink color. And afterward, the juice is transferred to stainless steel where it undergoes a very long, cool alcoholic fermentation. And oh, I mean, I get this super cool, like a lot of fresh fruit. Really kind of fresh red fruit and lean minerality. Really, really juicy good. <laughs> love it. <laughs> it looks fabulous. I love the story behind it too. I love it. It's yeah. great. That's great. So false where we're going next is known for its variety in varietals. So the falls is Germany's second largest wine region and the largest red wine region. It's also one of Germany's most diverse regions with at least 45 white varieties and 22 red varieties planted. It's a lot. So white grapes make up 60% of plantings and red grapes the other 40%. The Falls wine region offers so much diversity, including the wine we have today, the Darting Pinot Meunier Trocken. Mm. So this is a $23 bottle of wine. And what's so cool is it's Pinot Meunier. I mean, how much do we love Pinot Meunier? It's such a, it's not a common grape to find as a single bottling, but when you do... Oh, love it. Yeah. So Weingut Darting has a history of grape growing that dates back to 1780, but they did not make wine under their own label until 1989. Helmut Darting is the winemaker and believes in taking a very minimal intervention approach to winemaking. So, oh, like I said, Pinot Munet, mm -hmm. I get ripe cherry, raspberry, mm. Oh, it's got this medium intensity, a lot of acidity, minerality. Oh my God, it's so good. I don't know. Are you enjoying it? I much? love it. I mean, I, and I, I will tell you that so many people overlook this variety because they feel like it must be just like a blending grape or something, but it's got so, like your descriptors are fabulous. I mean, it's true. Those cherries, plums and raspberries, a little bit of you know, that brambly, earthy feel. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a delicious wine. And I'm just so impressed with how many styles of wine are in Germany, which is a relatively small country. I mean, not all of it is wine growing region. They, they just have done it for centuries upon centuries and are getting better every day. Absolutely. And we've only touched the surface. There are exactly. 13 wine growing regions and we hit three. And each region mm -hmm. does such a, a variety of grapes and styles and we've only yeah. had four wines today but I think we've touched on a part of it and hopefully that just opens up interest to try more because you know it is true Pinot Meunier is typically a blending grape so when you find it mm -hmm. as a single variety wine that's a very unique thing and you should grab it and for $23 grab lots of this wine what a deal what a deal exactly perfect food pairing wine perfect so yep you know love it um, that's what we love. Germany offers a diversity of wines, and hopefully we shared some of these German wines to seek out and drink now. So give our video a like, share a German wine you like, and subscribe to our channel for more. Cheers. Cheers.